Well, Keith Cowling joins me now from outside Washington, D.C. He's editor of NASAWatch.com, as well as an astrobiologist and former rocket scientist. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Thank you. So, uh, the BRICS members have been, as we just reported, uh, deepening their space cooperation. And currently, there's a network of remote sensing satellites. Could you talk more about that? Uh, what does it achieve? And who stands to benefit from this? Well, I'll take the second part of that first. Everybody benefits. Oh. And when you have uh, issues such as climate change, global warming, things like that, and weather, uh, and increasing populations, and all these global issues together, the more we know about everything, the better everybody is, because all these systems are interrelated. And what you have above the politics that may govern the formal interactions with com uh, countries, you have a, a variety of satellites from many countries where all the information is published in the open and in the clear. So the collaboration happens regardless of whether the politics tries to interfere with it. All right. Well, you know, bringing in politics, though, China is not part of the International Space Station and is, in fact, completing its own space station, the Tiangong. What are the implications of having two space stations uh, circling Earth? Well, I'm a, I'm a member of the group that says only two. Why not five? Uh, as a matter of fact, right now there's an impetus in uh, our country to look at commercial stations, maybe more than one, that NASA will help support. And the International Space Station isn't quite going anywhere just yet. And so, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the mind that the more options you have and the more interchanging, and again, this is an issue where, you know, spacecraft can dock between all these space stations and how you plug things in inside is pretty much the same. It's not the engineering, it's not the science, it's again the politics or lack thereof. So. Right. But if, correct me if I'm wrong, the International Space Station is nearing its phys the, the end of its physical lifespan soon, is it not? Well, that depends. I, what do you mean by soon? I mean, they're going to be uh, keeping it operating until at least 2030, so it's another eight years. Eight years, right. And, and so, you know, I mean, space is big and infinite, and time is great. But, you know, eight years is quite a long time, and we, in the interim, there may be one or more commercial space stations in addition to the International Space Station and Chenggong. So, you know, I, I'm, again, I'm of the mind that the more the merrier. It would just be nice if everybody could collaborate a little bit more than they are right now. Mm. And so how do you see the Tiangong facilitating future BRICS space programs, uh, especially considering that Russia will be quitting the International Space Station? Well, uh, Russia says they're going to quit, but then they turn around and they extend things. So, But here, mm -hmm. here's the beauty of it. Whether they want to quit or dial down or dial up, if you have more than one option to do things in space, that actually provides more flexibility, more oppor opportunities. And again, if you look at BRICS, it's it's Brazil, U.S. works with them. Russia, well, we're working with them. Uh, uh, India, we have a race, relations with them. China, not so good. And South Africa. So there's already three or four different ways that we're already collaborating in the side and, you know, from the top and the bottom and the back. And so um, I'm, I'm meandering a bit here, but the cooperation usually drives the politics more than the politics drives the cooperation in the end. It may take longer, but usually the cooperation always wins. Mm, very interesting. So, Keith, you know, some view the growing BRICS endeavors as a new space race with the West. Is that warranted? No, because we're also working with all the BRICS partners in one way or another. So, again, now it's a multilateral arena, as the diplomats would say, whereas different countries are competing with each other. And, oh, by the way, there's several companies that have budgets that exceed those of some nations. So you have companies in the mix. So in some cases, they're collaborating. In some cases, they're cooperating. Usually, it's a little bit of both which, again, in my mind, is it's healthy when you're really sort of prompting each other to do better or to do more or to be cheaper or to have something that nobody else has. It's when you have one option that things get boring. Keith Cowings, the editor of nasawatch.com. As always, thank you so much for your time and insight. My pleasure.